Ooh, ah, ooh. What is up, everyone, and welcome to Monday. It's the Facebook Live show. I'm this, Dean. This is up. He's Fernando. We've done this once or twice. Some of you guys are along for the ride. Mr. And Johnny! Today we actually had a little bit of time, and these are the these are half. This is exactly half of the new cabinets that we uh, we got installed today. So we have exactly that many more cabinets to go on the other side of that. But we had this show to do, so we're like, holy crap, we need to stop and do a show. That's the thing, huh? Thank yeah, I know. Hey, from the frozen tundra of northern Texas. Crazy. <laughs> hey, dog. Oh my god. How are you, man? Yeah, no doubt. I miss you. But anyways, yeah, so we finally, uh, damn. All right, everyone just drop your temperatures. We're going to oh, see who's got it the coldest, man. All right. Damn. 10 degrees in Dallas. I got to tell you, that's almost like being in the Omni Center. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. <laughs> did, they, did they leave the door open? Did someone forget to shut the door at the Omni? <laughs> I mean, what the hell? Yeah, no kidding, right? Well, welcome back, Robert. Um, so anyways, today is Monday for what all that's worth. So glad to be living in Florida. I know, right? Yeah, Although, that sucks. It is, it is unseasonably Ooh, warm. Minus, minus four. Minus of snow. Oh my oh, god. Oh man. It warmed up to negative one. Five Six. Degrees. Uh, 25. Negative four in Fargo. Two. It's not 68. Just Doug Dobson, 68 here. <laughs> you know, he's probably going, damn it, four more degrees and I'd be floating in my pool. Negative two in Fargo. <laughs> Ooh, oh. Happy Monday, snow and cold. Miss See, it's Brian. so funny. I got excited when he saw the Groundhog Day, and uh, and and like, you know, I mean, we're living Groundhog Day, but like when Puck's Tommy Phil <gasps> negative thirty eight. That's warm. It's Alberta, Canada, and it's Celsius. Slow it down, uh, killer. I was like, ah. <laughs> twenty eight, Massachusetts. Twenty one. Oh my gosh. Mm. Ten to twelve inches of snow by tomorrow. That's right. Seventy six. Daytona. That's oh, right, did you baby. know the Daytona 500 was yesterday? Yes, that was yesterday. I yeah. had no idea. I yeah. mean, it, the when I went out to pick up the the heart shaped pizzas for the girls, it was like uh, and starting the Daytona 5. I was like, wow, 15 degrees and snow is falling. 36 in PA. Ooh. There you go. Oh my God, it's 76. I love that. I hate hot. <laughs> oh man. What's I up, hate man? Groundhog Day. I know. Well, I, but we were supposed to get more winter. And so we got all excited. Stop paging, it's cold. It's a cold hit and do you hear how it starts? <laughs> That's crazy, 13 degrees. Well, let me tell you that right now we have one more 70, 77 degrees here in oh clear water. So we won. And waiting ah. for a snowstorm in northern Maine. Ooh. Uh, it was 90 here today. I know, right? <laughs> Hello from more Canada. 25 and out. Yeah, New York. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so cold. Well, all right, so what- and This show is brought to you by- This show is brought to you by the, the weather. weather. All right, so we got a couple things we'll start off the show with here today. Uh, earlier, late last week, mm -hmm. guess it depends. <laughs> Clint, you're funny. 76 here in Australia. Eh, 29 Kentucky. All right, just let him come. 76 on Tuesday. More white gold and sledding. Oh man, sledding. I hope we think it's number. I'm pasty white all the time. I mean, I don't really burn anymore. Yes, yes. I just get freckles. Um, so if you guys caught the Instagram live show earlier or late, sometime last week, we've been working on getting ready to film the Morel installation for Fernando's car. Yes, he has yeah. a set of the hybrids that they sent us and we've been promising to have them put in. We got like an hour last week and we're like, you know, we really need to do some back end side of that because anytime we film the video like that, yeah. Uh, we need it needs to be in a timely manner yes. for for filming. Yeah. Oh, it's so on. yeah, it's on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we wanted to get the tweeter pods or mounts made. The, the, yeah, the tweeter mounts. Tweeter mounts. So we we showed them earlier, but what we thought we'd do is we kind of go through and show it to you guys again, I, give you an idea of of what we had and what we're going to. It's not ready. Let me see if the can't isn't that ready. It's not ready. Oh, okay. Are you sure? Yeah. All right. Hold on. Let's see. Yeah, it's ready. Ooh. All right, so let's let's pan back to here. All, All right, right, so let me get this out of the way. Um, so this is the T1 Phoenix Gold tweeter that was in there. This tweeter sounded phenomenal. It's oh, an yeah. exceptional tweeter. One of the things I like about this tweeter is this threaded hole right here in the back makes it super easy to mount 
uh, especially in the G35, because it had a piece of metal that the factory tweeter was mounted to, and the factory tweeter was screwed in. So this, you just pull out the factory tweeter, put the bolt back in, screw this into place, and it's sitting right over top of the hole. So as far as ease of installation goes, this Phoenix Gold was like super easy to do. It took us all of five minutes, you know? Mm -hmm. It actually took us longer to solder the factory plug on than it did to mount the tweeter. Correct. Now we're gonna put these hybrids in there. These are the MT300s. As yep. you can see, compared to this, it is a much bigger tweeter, both. Oh yeah, I mean, you can see it right there. It's just. You know, the way bigger tweeter yeah well that was going to pose some problems for us because we have a small opening that we're trying to put it in so the first thing we thought of is how are we going to mount this tweeter between the two posts that this would that this normally would screw to so i came up with this design here that has two little edges this is the screw post it's off center i've already broken this one as you can see how thin it is but it's off center, the tweeter isn't actually centered. How we found the center point though, was we scanned in this metal piece that the factory had, and that gave us the dead center of where this needs to sit between the two posts. So from that, that got, that was pretty cool. So we made a couple different thicknesses of those until we found the right size, because even though on the laser, you're dealing with decimal points in, to the hundredth decimal point, so sometimes it's you know, 0 0.002 instead of 0 0.003. And the idea was to get it to the, where it was the same diameter as the grill so that this piece would slide onto here like that and then go down into between, which it's broke, so go down in between those two posts. And so that was cool, but I wanted to make sure that the grill, you know, the grill couldn't go back on. So we had to actually step it up a little bit. So we came up with a different idea. So once we had this concept, we moved on to this. This is a two piece. So now we added in some arms that allow us to stack these two on top of one another. And as you can see the little light gap there, this is going to give us a real tiny skinny hole to mount the, the tweeter in. And then this is a much bigger hole or a, a not as bigger hole and that is this inside diameter of the tweeter here. So that the tweeter is going to sit on it like this. So the tweeter is going to sit on that and you still have the full opening of the tweeter. But now we can lock these two into place with these screws like this and mount it in between those two bars. And the Bobby last step, uncle. what's that? And Bobby is your uncle. And Bobby is your uncle. Yeah. And then the last step is this piece here. We need to be able to lock this back into place even though it's super tight. So this piece is designed to go over the top of the speaker like this. And it's the diameter of the magnet. Now the cool thing is that if you'll see this black piece right here, this was the exact, it just worked out this way. This was the exact height of the bars that this is gonna screw into. So once we put this on and it rests on that magnet lip, this was the exact height of the bars. Mm -hmm. To give you a complete, now what we just talked about so you can put it all into action is the actual mount inside of the tweeter. So it is screwed into place, the wire comes up through here, and hang on, I'll grab a light because it's just falling into a black abyss. Yeah. Don't put the lights back. <laughs> hey, somebody's Funny. phone is on. Bet you that's yours. So here we go. So now you can see those pieces stacked on top of one another. They're screwed together. We threaded the, the, we threaded the acrylic to screw in, so because we didn't have room, as you can see, for a nut. It's perfectly flat on top of that. So that gives us the mount for the big morel tweeter. Fits in, the hole in the front was the right size, so we didn't have anything to worry about there. Mm -hmm. It was just a matter of making it so that we could get this tweeter to mount into the car. And the reason why we're showing this is because everyone, you know, hey, when is he getting his speakers in his car? When is he getting the speakers in his car? And, and we're getting closer, but we needed to do a little work here um, to get it in there. And we just yeah. also wanted to show you the size difference between a T1 tweeter. T2 tweeter. Well, the, the Phoenix Gold. The Phoenix Gold tweeter. Phoenix Gold tweeter and the Morale tweeter. Totally. So, yeah. <sighs> All right. And with that being said, uh, have you guys heard of this 
Facebook page. You may or may not have. It's called the 12 Volt Clean Wire Club. Some of you may have heard of it. I know some of you have. But anyways, it's this club over here. And the whole purpose of the club is to show some really cool wiring. Yeah. Um, and then if you do a really cool wiring job, you get featured at the top of the page for a week. And why do I have these open? <laughs> this one, it's... Um, well, this one is for... It's a new guy. Yeah, we're not even going to worry about who that's from. But yeah. my point is, is that, uh, you know, you, you guys are kind of lacking. You guys are kind of lacking. We want to see more clean wire pictures up there. Uh, just, just post them, man. Post them. Take it like a man. Take, take, take it. Take it like a man. Put them up there. Uh, audio control versus Zapco. We really haven't done a lot with the Zapco. So, I mean, a, a couple of my friends really love the Zapco. Obviously, we really, really, really love the audio control. Yep. Um, I'm a big fan of downloading the software and playing with it. I think they both sound amazing, so you're good there. Yeah. Now that we've all seen the cabinets, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit oh, because we wow. don't need to see those anymore. We're pretty excited about the cabinets. Of course, we'll keep you apprised of the situation there. Yes. All right, moving all on. All right. Are the Hertz Central line of the speaker any good? And what can they be compared to? It is their mid fi line. So it is not their it's not their best, obviously. It's not their worst, if if, if the worst could even be a thing. So basically it goes Uno, Dice, Cento. Dici. Dici. Dici Ichi. And then you have Cento Pro. So it's right in there in that mid fi consumer price point, that hundred and fifty sub two hundred dollar speaker. Um, Jumping up from there, you, you jump up from there into the Milli, but the Milli is a is a much bigger speaker. Um, I guess the best way to think about it is, I don't even know if that's right. It's it's not a bad speaker. It's a nice speaker. It's a nice speaker. They sound good for the money. If mm -hmm. you're comparing them to other lines, you have Focal integration and Focal access. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the uh, Maxima Maximos. Mm -hmm. Supreme or Maximus from Morel, mm -hmm. all within that same price point. Right. You also have like R types and Exelons and, and and a half dozen other brands that are in that price point. But yeah, they're nice. What do you think about the Morel Ultimo Titanium Titanium 122? I mean 12 too. Oh, the 12 inch? I think so. I mean, yeah. I have one. Yeah. I can't wait to hear it. Um, I mean, it's got a maybe, maybe. Yeah, that's a whole other topic. When you um, at one point, uh, what does the group think of the JLC two six fifties? Good budget option for high sensitivity with factory amplifier. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I would agree with that. Um, yeah, you could do that. You might also want to look at like the Prima from Audison. Yep. Very high sensitivity. Uh, work really well with the low power. Hi, That'd mom. Sound good. Oh my gosh, really? Oh hey, what's going on? You got some? Um, okay, oh, so. Hold on, yeah, let me answer this. Okay. I know you like Morel speakers, but what do you think about their amps? Are they as good as the audio controls? They're different. I, I, don't, I would never compare a Morel amplifier to audio control, two totally different amplifiers. Um, the audio controls are AB class amplifiers. They're only like 70 watts by four. Uh, I think it's 500 by one. The five channel is probably the best value five channel hybrid amplifier, meaning it's 70 watts by four for a b class and then it's a 500 watt d class mono amplifier for the sub channel so there's very few amplifiers like that the audio controls are all straight d amplifiers and they're all like 120 to 110 to 120 watts per channel so no they're they're different animals for sure the guys that buy the morel want what the morel does they want they they don't want class d they're like oh, i want an a b and so you buy it most of the time you're buying a Morel, you're buying that five channel to use as a three channel. So you can get like, you know, big power. But definitely, definitely nice amplifier. All right, where will you set the high pass filter in the DSP for a full range speaker? For example, the Infinity Kappa 86 CFX six inch, X eight okay. inch. If the owner's manual says the frequency response is from 40 hertz to 25k, it is okay to set it all the way down to no. 40 or no. higher, says like 80. Yeah, 
Yeah. 80s. The, the frequency response isn't the crossover point by any stretch of the imagination. It's just telling you that it's capable of producing those. And, and there again, that it's it's not. It's real numbers, but they're not real usable numbers. Okay. Those are those are numbers that aren't for what you're trying to do. Um, you would never play the speaker down to 40 hertz. Okay, I won't say never because never is a really short period of time. The likelihood of you doing that is thin. Like we would never take a pair of speakers and play them down to 40 hertz, uh, especially if there's a subwoofer. That's what the subwoofer's for. Um, but 80 hertz is typically where you're going to cross over a six and a half, depending on the type of music you listen to. Because remember, you're going to adjust the six and a half depending on how much power you're putting to them, how loud you want them to be. I mean, if we're just going straight SQ and performance and stuff like that, yeah, 80 hertz is a good place to start. You may have to go down, you may have to go up. It just depends. You know, if you're straight up hip hop gangster thug all day long, you may want to go up from 80 to something like 110, 120, just because that music has a tremendous amount of bass in it. And that low of a crossover point might not be doing its job with that type of music. So sometimes you have to move the crossover up depending on what you're doing. Unless the speaker can take it, which, you know, that depends there again back on the speaker. All right, 2021 for runner, front stage. Can we go up to 3.5 inch in the dash and a 6 by 9 on the door? Any negativities of doing like a 3.5 Morel full range in the dash and a 6 by 9 coax in the door? Or oh, better sound to do a 6 by 9 or six and a half components with the crossovers even if it only is a three-quarter driver going in the dash i don't know if the three-quarter i mean i know we can fit the morel dome mid-range in the tundras gangsta but we have to <laughs> there you go there he is that... fuck life i'm sure look behind you jeff um <laughs> i know we can fit the the Okay, so we fit the. All right, we fit the Morel Dome yes. mid range. There's yeah. the fire trucks, guys. In the dash of the Tundra. Yep. But yep. we have to file some stuff around. Uh -huh. We fit the Audio Frog speaker. I don't know what size that is, Jeff. And the dash of Jeff's Toyota Camry um, without having to do too much modification. The Morel. I don't think, like, the dome would be the closest one that might fit. Um, but, you know, if you look at, like, the, like the three-way set I think that, in the forerunner, it's too small. I mean, you could do the 6x9. So, like, if you did the Altimos with the 224 mid-range up in the dash, that would be cool. But you'd have to be active. GB25. Yeah, so, like, yeah, so it's a 2.5. That's what I thought. Yeah, so really it's going to be a 2.5. But you could fit the, the little morels with the 6x9 like we did, and, the, and that would be cool. Mm -hmm. You know? Because morel makes the, t the, what is it? The, the middler. The middler. Mm -hmm. So if you were active on the whole thing, then you wouldn't have any issues at all. Um, but they also make, um, that's really nice and, and pretty affordable, is the, is those the Maxima? The 6 tweeter and the middler? Uh, yes, the Maxima. That's the Maximo's. Maximo. The Maximo three-way set. Mm -hmm. Those are really nice. Uh, we did those. Actually, we did that in an active in a Nissan uh, up in the dash, and that sounded really nice. So, yeah. oh, yeah. Mm. Okay. I, so, go yeah. ahead. All right. I have an Alpine PDX V9 with the focal integration components and the rear coaxials. Doesn't seem as loud I expected. Gain said with the Lumi... Think about switching to audio control 5.1300. Will that will be a better solution? What was his original amplifier? A PDXV9. It's 110 watts. It's 110 watts. And then you're going to switch to an amplifier that's actually 100 watts. Yes, because it's the audio control is 100 watts. So the problem with the Alpine is the Alpine never sounds powerful. It sounds good, but it never gets to that powerful, oh. Mm -hmm. What you may want to think about doing instead of going that way is bridging the PDX V9. So take the PDX V9 to a three channel amp and get a second amp, smaller amplifier to power the rear speakers. Mm -hmm. That's what we typically would do in a situation where we were like starving for power. 
Um, there was a situ there was one particular case where we had a gentleman that came in and he had some X series components and it was an F two fifty. We put the tweeters, the six and a halfs, and ran everything off the PDE X V nine. It sounded wonderful, but he came back and he's like, I really want it louder. And we're like, okay. So we took the PDX V9, bridged it to a three channel, and then we actually put in a second PDX V9, bridged that as well, and added another subwoofer. Big time loud, big time loud at that point. But I don't, I, you're, you're, making, you're making a lateral move. You're, you're gonna increase sound quality, I feel, because I think the, the audio control sounds better than the PDX V9. Mm -hmm. Not that the PDX9 sounds bad, it sounds great. It was our favorite amplifier for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. But I understand the power problem with it. And the other thing with the PDX V9 is that you literally cannot overdrive that input because it will shut off. Yeah, it will go and protect. Thank you, Chad. That's a, that's it. It's a 254s. Yep, those are them. Um, oh, look oh, at the, the illusion. illusion. Yeah, CDX. but well, also no cutting. Oh, really? No cutting. Okay, so if you're not cutting nothing, just go with the flux. Yeah, but he's got <laughs> the room, though. Oh, does, does the CX not have the tweeter? It has the tweeter. I mean, just, I'm just, you know, I mean, let's be honest. It's, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I just buy the GP. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> buying the GP at that point. I mean, if, if, if I'm sitting here struggling with it, I'm buying the GP. Those, those sound incredible. I mean... I don't know. I mean, okay. I'm either I'm either fitting my morale or I'm going with the GB. It, that's really what it comes down to. Okay. So did we answer the other question? Or, God, uh, I hope so. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So why so wait, much? Wait, wait, wait. Why? High fives here. All right. Shh. Everyone, hide. High fives here. Hide. Hide. Fi. Damn. The sauce. Why? Why? Okay. All right. Why so much love for a five channel amplifier? Aren't the six channel more powerful and flexible? No, no, they're not. Um, it's actually Why? less power. So, all right, let's think about what we're trying to do here. Why a five channel versus a six channel? Most of the time, most of the time, not all the time. Because uh, like, for example, when you look at the new Focal six channel that will do five channel, um, that is the exception to the rule because their five channel will bridge five and six to two ohm and give you the 500 watts that you were looking for as opposed to uh, like the audio control six channel where you bridge them, you don't get the 500 watts that you're looking for. Uh, these aren't the droids where you get like 400 and something watts. So it's, it's not necessarily a good thing. It, it really just comes down to the goal of what you're trying to do. Thank you, Scott. What you're trying to do. If you're just doing a standard system, the five channel is wonderful. Front, rear, sub, that's what we all want. Five channel is gold. Personally, if you're asking what we really need is a seven channel. Screw six, I want seven. Because I want uh, one amplifier, I want to, I want more door amplifier. I want one ring to rule them all. So, you know, I want a seven channel, possibly an eight channel, but not the eight channel you're thinking. I want an eight channel that has like uh, 70 by three, 120 by two, maybe 70 in the rear, and then 500 by one. I just want 150. I mean, yeah, 150 by everything, you know, 150 by seven and 500 by one would be really sweet. But I mean, you know, it gotta be 800. Yeah, yeah. So and then I mean, you're gonna have the ideas. It all amplifier. just depends what you're trying to do. I mean, right, the, the right. idea is buy as many amplifiers as you can fit in your car. And rock oh, on. totally. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. Uh, hold on, someone's yelling at us. I have a set of Kenwood component six by nine axlons and six by nine coaxials in the rear with two 10 inch subs. I want to add a DSP, which would be best for me, six to eight or eight to 10? Six by nine components. Six, six, six to eight is the minimum you're gonna need. Six to eight, yeah. Six to eight is the minimum you're six gonna six need. If you're never co planning on adding any more speakers to the car, then six to eight would be your best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. That's really what it comes six down to. Six to eight. Um, and I don't know the price difference between the two, because I've never looked, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, kicker key seven channel. Mm. Doug Dobson. Yeah, I was waiting for that dog. Doug, yeah, yeah. Doug fell out Doug. of his chair in the pool yeah. getting to his phone. He was like, <laughs> dude, we got that. Oh, we yeah. got that. We oh, got totally. seven, eight, and 12. <laughs> Helix yeah. is the answer to that question. That's right. Yes. That's right. If, if, yeah, if they the question do. is how multi channel amplifiers with DSP, Helix is the answer to that nah, question. Nah, you gotta drop your, you gotta like. No. 
Well, yeah, but I mean, that's... Oh, totally. I, who cares? I mean, that's, Oh, yes. That's, you're yeah. going to have to do it anyways. Lewis from Portugal's in the house. Perfect. You're going to have to yes. do that anyway. So it's just a matter of and Helix is what awesome. you're trying to do. Yes. Uh, yes, but the Helix would be the answer to that question. Thank you, Doug. Thank you for reminding me. We just Drop need the your, mic. Yeah, Boom. Yeah. And, and that's it. I mean, that, that's, that's where we're at. Um, because, like, I would go with the 12-channel because then oh, I could yes. bridge and get more power. Yes. Because yes. I'd turn my, my 12 so, into... But I'd still end up probably... So the last now. time that we did the 12 Days of Christmas, I was looking into the amplifiers, and I'm like, oh, my God, look at the 4-channel. You can bridge the 4-channel, go channel to the, the mid-bass, yeah. another 4-channel for another mid-bass, and... Ah, oh, that was awesome. I was like... Yeah. Yeah, I like I like that. Sweet so dreams. Ground Zero has the one that we have for Gabby's car. Mm -hmm. That's four channels of power plus four outputs, mm -hmm. which is really nice because mm -hmm. that that takes us into that mini DSP with die rack. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess. Uh, I'm away. I'm right up the road. Hi from Venice, Florida. What's up, man? Marty Dean is in the house. Marty hey, hey. Dean. Head She's over traveling. to uh, Aussie Irons. Aussie Do you Irons. For Aussie Irons. AussieIrons.com. They have the new one. Yes. Which I gotta order. I gotta order one. I know. Yes. I still gotta send you the rulers too. I just I haven't, dude. You're listen, lacking, I, man. Dude, You're after lacking. the twelve days of Christmas, the last thing I wanted to do was send anything out in the post office. It's you know, just you been, only have one job in here, dude. It's negative thirty where he's at. That's crazy. That's crazy. Are you in Canada? <laughs> Are you in Canada? <laughs> um, can I run? All right. Can I run bridge from left, right, rear speakers? What? Hold on. Because I don't have rear deck speakers in my 2000. Can I run bridge from left, right, rear speakers to rear deck? Because I don't have. Oh, he's got a 2017 Camaro that has the open holes in the rear deck. Because, remember, like, uh, what's his name? It had, um, yep, yep. Yep. So you had, in the Camaro, in the newer ones, it has speakers in the side panels to the rear deck. Uh, as long as you have an amplifier on them, the question, yes. <laughs> no, I think I will up in Alaska. Yeah, no oh, that's doubt. Awesome. Um, but if you, if you, okay, so if you're running an amplifier, yes. If you're running deck power, no. Because the deck power doesn't have the power to do that. That's why they're not in there. Uh, the reason, those are the factory six by nine inch subwoofers that would be in the car if it had the premium sound system. So you can't just drop a set of six by nines in there, run them off of that. Uh, and then run them off of radio power. You you have to have an amplifier. But if you have an amplifier, then the question is the answer is yes, you can do that. Uh, what's needed to amp in a 2021 Camaro 1LE non-bows? Uh, I th uh, honestly I don't know. Um, if it's it, okay, so there's like three or four different systems in the Camaro. Even if you have non-bows, if it has a factory amplifier of any kind in the back area. It's probably gonna, it should be variable voltage back there. It may not, it might be AVB, but honestly I don't know yet because we haven't had a chance 2021, to. 2021. Yeah, we haven't had a chance to play with one yet. But I would, if. But that was Sean's. That that's was not 2020? 2020. No, that's like 2017. No. Yeah. Yeah, dude, it's been a while. That's like a 2017. So that's 2021. It's not even 2020. Might be a 2018. I think that was. No, it's not. That's Either way, if it has any, if it has any one of the factory amplified systems in the back, check it for variable voltage output, because they all had that. It, it, Camaro's the odd duck in the whole group, and they don't play along with everything. So, all right, I want to replace my 12-inch subwoofer in my F350. Wait, I don't. Wait, hold, hold on, hold on. Wait, there's a, there's a really, there's a really stupid question here, Steve. All right. It's not that it's a stupid question. It's just not a fair comparison when you're asking, what's your opinion between the Morel Virtus compared to the Focal Utopia M series? It's that they're not, it's, it's like asking what, what's a Kia compared to a Cadillac. Yeah, they're both cars and they both drive, but they're not, um, you're not in the they're same. not in the same category. No. Uh, if you were trying if to compare. If you're trying to compare like the Morel M, I mean the, the Utopia M's, that will be the Morel's uh, Ultimo's. No. No, not the Ultimo. Elate? No, it's above the Elate. Uh, above the Elate. Yeah, I don't know. You'd have to go check yeah, the manual. Yeah, so, okay, so hang on. But really what compares the Virtus is the Flax. So yes. the Flax are, are the same price point as the Virtus. So if, yeah. The... Yeah, that's them. Is this one? Yeah, it's those. Yeah, the Supremo. Supremo. The Supremo. The Supremo is what you would compare to the Utopia M series. Like like that, yes. Thank you, Chad. Thank See? you, Chad. 
Chat should be Um Yeah. Supremo. Just did a Boston version and a Camaro full, full range, range and variable. variable. Oh, thank you, Marty. So yes, okay, so there you go. So it should be all right, like I said, you have three packages in there. So 2021, there's a chance that it's full range and variable. So just check you at your amplifier with your um, little voltmeter. Thank, thank you, Pat. guys. Yeah, thank Supremo. You. See? Jesus, Dude, man. I can't remember everything. Wow. All right, so go back to your other question. I'm sorry. All right. Go ahead. I want to replace my 12-inch subwoofer in my F350. I don't want to spend more than 900. 900. Okay. What is the best for the small space? We're trying to go behind it's the F350. seat? F350, yeah. I think, I think I don't have 900 anything. bucks is gonna... plenty. I mean, all right, so... Thank you, Mel. Mel Mel's a closet uh, Morel fan. Yes. Yeah. Because, I mean, if you drop the O and the R, it basically sells Mel. <laughs> it's Morel or. Anyways, um, if you add an or to Morel, uh, if you add an or to Mel, then... All right, so back to the F-250. <laughs> A couple years ago, we had a gentleman come in that had a box made for behind the seat in an F-250. We always match him, um, man. That, yeah, both crappy shirts. Uh, <laughs> he went with the JL W8, one of the 8-inch the behind the seat, and somebody made a box for it, and it, was, it wasn't pre-made, it was, and it sounded phenomenal. Oh my god, that was insane. Uh, I was shocked, because I was like, dude, how do you, really? Oh, wow. Uh, so it can be done. Yes. It can be done. You're just gonna have to find and a I good think, box builder to do it. But I think I would 900 bucks is a good. Yeah, I think you're right good. in point. But I would definitely look into that. Um, that now, if JL you want a beautiful H. box, you can go to MTI and, and. If you're willing to go underneath the seat, they might offer you something for underneath the seat. Yeah. You know, you MTI. could probably get something off to the left or the right, or possibly get something with a cargo tray in it or something like that. But MTIAcoustics.com is where we go for pretty boxes. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, you guys did an awesome install of the Thesis and Voce components. Did they blend well? Were the HTH worth... Tri oh, Double, triple, were the Thesis the worth... Yes, they were. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so before we had done that system, we talked extensively with Lance at... The boss. Lance boss. Lance Doss, <laughs> the boss. We talked extensively with Lance yeah. about that. And it, the only reason why we felt confident going through with that is because he actually just got done tuning that same system in another car, and he was like, dude, this was insane. It was incredible. You should, you, no problem doing this. So with his reassurance, because, you know, we had never done a pair of thesis before. We didn't know how they were going to match up to the Voce tweeter. We just figured we'd get a ton of mid-bass, which is what we wanted, and we did. And we actually got to hear the truck, I think. Did we hear it again? Yeah, we heard it. Yeah, oh, totally. Yes. But it's so, like, I was actually, we're getting ready to do his son's car, and he was just telling me how much he loves it. So, it, yeah, it worked out wonderfully. Um, what made it work, though, was that we went with the, the Voce 5.1, that front channel 70 watts of A-class on those tweeters. Mm -hmm. So that whole system was specifically designed to work the way it did. Taking something out of the equation for it, I don't know if you'd have the same results. So that that was that was it. Mel is on point today. I tell you what, he's just Mel. You're the man. Mel. Mel needs cookies. Mel is the man. Uh, I have Voce three ways now. I drool over those thesis though. Oh yeah, dude, they're so sexy. Trust me, they're so sexy. And that's what started the plexiglass panels for the F-150s that we do because we're like. Oh my gosh, this would be the coolest thing ever, which reminds me, I have to order more clear acrylic. Um, yeah. All right. Ready? Yes. I'm planning uh, a two-way active system in okay. a van using the Audison Forza amplifiers. Okay. Amplifier, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, Hertz melee components, tweeters on one and two channel and mid-bass running by amp. On yes. the three, four, and five. Makes sense. And six, and then sub on seven and eight. Is there another system that could offer that sort of setup to do a better job? To do a better job, no. To do the same job, yes. Um, there are a couple amplifiers that, that are basically all the same amount of power, all the same size, and all the same functionality as that. Uh, 
Uh, Moscone makes one. Arc makes one. Arc's smaller, though, I think. Arc is like 50. Yeah, it is. Moscone is the closest thing to that Forza, but I would go with the Forza. I mean, Helix uh, to make. Helix makes. I'm sorry. Helix, Helix yes. Helix that. also has something yeah. in that range. Mm -hmm. Um so, but those are, if, if you're trying to just look outside of the box and make sure you've covered and dotted all your T's and all that other stuff, mm -hmm. uh, like I said, Moscone makes one, and then you could also look at something like the Helix has an 8-channel also. So, there you go. Um, as far as better, it's just, no. Had a dude in Mexico that has been making, making boxes, boxes for hundreds of carpeted. Oh, oh, I don't know. Oh, wow. For subs. Had to be easy to bring in the boxes, and they were amazing for cheap. Yeah. Uh, I mean, why not? Chip Laper, man. Ooh, Bobby, what's your favorite Girl Scout cookie? Do you have a favorite Girl Scout cookie? Yeah. Don't say Thin Mints. Hang on. No. No, not those. What Samosas? The, the, the coconut ones that I gave you that one year? Yes, I think that was. The, yes. The, yes, the that's right. Elias yeah. is right. Do you know they sell those now in the store? Uh, Keebler makes those now. Yeah, They're not the same. If I buy a box, I'm going to eat it in like oh, eat the whole box. one sitting. <laughs> oh, dude, you buy a $5 box of Girl Scout cookies, uh, you got to yeah. eat the whole thing because you, yeah. it's like, I just bought this. I don't want anyone to have any. These are like, each cookie is like 25, 50 cents a piece. Yes. I mean, Jesus. But they good. What did you go to speaker wire? Stinger. We just use Stinger. Stinger. Um, but yeah, we just use Stinger for everything. I mean, they're local. It's, it's wire's wire. Mm -hmm. I, unless it's you know all right whatever take it how you will all right if you have a ram if i have a ram i've had a ram i've had three 1500 yep 2012 haven't, haven't oh i had a 10 or an eight. what speaker sub box head unit amplifiers will you put in there for a sand quality bill so when i had my ram okay i had a different world that was a different time that was long long time that was a ago. long time ago uh, 10s underneath the back seat have, I've always liked the 10s underneath the back seat. Okay. Like, I think 12s are, unless you're getting a fiberglass box built, mm -hmm. you just don't have the airspace for the 12s. Okay. The 10s to me sound best. If you go Fox acoustic kind of kills the whole look of the truck. I mean, you're buying that box for that specific thing. Okay. Uh, which I, I never was. I wanted my seat to be normal. So I feel two 10s are the best. Um, I'm doing six by nines or six and a half components up front. Okay. If I'm trying to do it on a budget, I'm going with the. Well, uh, I mean, we talk about sound quality, so no, it's like. I mean, I'm back. still I'm still going Morel. Okay. I'd probably go Morel six by nine components up front. Okay. Um, or, or, if I'm just designing something to design something, I'm going to go with that Maximo six by nine. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Illusion three and a half in the dash, because I'm going to go active. So I'd probably do the Illusion three and a half in the dash. Either way, whatever I pick in the door. The Illusion three and a half is going in the dash because I want and the amplifiers. Uh, amplifier wise, I got to have something that fits under the front two seats. Yeah, that can be fairly big because it's a twelve, so you don't have to worry about all that crap. Okay, you could also probably fit something behind the rear seat too. Mm -hmm. um, I'll probably do it all audio control. Yeah, I got the room, so I'm gonna go big. So I'm gonna go audio control all the way around. And then for radio, I don't know. I kind of like the, the the T amplifiers because you can do the seven fifty point one, four hundred by four, and four hundred yeah, by but two. Yeah, but if I'm if I'm building the system that I want, right. I'm going big power. I don't think the T series has. I want that hundred. And Elias has small amplifiers too. That's right. Yeah, you know, yeah. The sound, sound digital, digital for sure. The twelve hundred four totally. and the, Ooh, the twelve hundred two. Yeah. Um, twelve hundred. Yeah, you can just go with a bunch of twelve hundred fours. Oh, awesome. Yeah, awesome. 1204 on the front and rear, and mm -hmm. a 1202 on the mid base. Or uh, 24, I'm sorry, it's 2400. Isn't it 2400? Jesus, it's right over there. I gotta freaking wire those. They have a up. 24 four yeah, 20, channel? Yes, it's, we have one to go in your car. 24? No, we don't have this. Yes, 24. we do. Yeah, no, we, we do. have the 1200. No, it's a 24. I swear to God, it's a no. 24. Hold on. No, it's not right, a 24. Wait. Freeze the show. No, it's not a 24. Dude. Oh, it's a 12. Ah! I thought it was a 24. I always get this shit. Back. All right, Elias, you gotta send the 24 now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a, uh, we have the four and the two for your car. Jesus! Yeah. I was excited for a second. I thought it was a 24, or maybe is it the 24 two? No, no, we Why don't have 24s. Like no, it's only the. My brain is mush, guys. I'm not gonna lie. It's it's it's. <sighs> This COVID no, stuff no, is no, really I'm starting sad. to tax me out. No, um, hey guys, Kicker Q class 
2005 on a set of Morel Maximus components, front stage, active, uh, 65, 65 yep. what a tweeter benefit from going to 252 passive. Um, making it a three channel three both channels. scenarios would also have 60 by two, two for the rear uh, I mean we're doing the Maximus components I really don't I don't think you'd benefit from going with more power I think this 65 by 4 would be plenty Yeah. I mean if you're going to jump like in the, the, the Accord we just did we went up to the Virtus and that's why we turned it into a three channel mm -hmm. because we needed that extra power. We wanted that extra power because it's 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 the bigger speaker in the bunch. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think you'd need it for those. Plus the the um, smell is on point. Um, plus the Maximus are more efficient, way more efficient than all the other Morels. That's why they're such a great value because they're efficient, they're reasonably priced, they're loud, they sound good. So I think you're fine. Just go five channel. Call it a day, or mm -hmm. go full active. I'd well, go full I, active. I think that's what he said. Oh, if we're gonna yeah, okay, so it's like all right. full active, no? That's Front stage active, sixty-five by four. Yeah, exactly. Well, okay, so if we took all right, so if we got the five thousand two, or the two channel, I think they only make a five thousand two. Well, we talk about the IQ 1005. Yeah. No, I'm saying you take the Q 1005 mm -hmm. and the Q 502. Okay. Okay. And that scenario, you put one and two tweeters, three and four rear, 5002 front mid base, sub, done. However, I still don't think it's necessary. I think you're totally fine yeah. with just the 1005 power and everything. We've done it enough to know that it's plenty of power. So, I, I yeah, I think it's, I think it's overkill. 19 yeah. in Austin. I, oh, Ice right. Apocalypse 2021. Yeah, no doubt, right? Crazy. 20, ah, see, 20. there is a 2400.4. I know that's a 2400, but I know we don't have that one. I thought we had that one. No. Damn it. Where's Tommy? Damn it, Tommy. Jesus. You're screwing man. with my head. Tommy's like, dude, you haven't even put the 1204 <laughs> in your car. What are you bitching about not having the 2400.4? Right. Slow it down, killer. Change the subject. Uh, 2020 GMC Terrain. Purchase a Rockford Fosgate P312T 4 gauge amp kit. Do you guys recommend anything different? No, I mean, 4 gauge is it's okay. Even you I don't, can I don't go think to the. Uh, well, I don't think you need it. Yeah, you don't need a 4 gauge. I'd probably yeah. scale that down to an 8 gauge, gauge. just to make yeah. your life easier. Mm -hmm. It's a 30 amp. That might even be it's a 20 a amp. amp. Is it 30? It's yeah, it's a 30 amp, maybe even a 20 amp current draw. Mm -hmm. Oh, is it 215s or 2? Either way. Jesus, yeah. P three hundred twelve. No, it's a thirty amp fuse. Is a fifty? No, it's red. That's ten. No. Yeah, red is ten. Really? Yeah. Dude, I thought it was. Yeah, red is ten. Twenty amps of current draw. Yeah, you don't need a four gauge. That's like overkill. That'd make your life. Oh, that would suck. Um, that would suck bad. But, so yeah. a gauge. So someone asks, is there is there a Five channel amp that has a thousand watts for the subwoofer. We really wanted that really bad. That was the, that was the uh, two years ago. That was the initial goal for um, the audio control five channel. It didn't happen. No. Um, so what we typically do in that case is we go with a four channel, like the D four point eight hundred and the LC one point eight hundred is the go to amplifier if you're trying to get that five channels of power with a thousand mm -hmm. watts for the sub. That's kind of the go-to there. Um, however, you know, <laughs> if we're talking about sound digital, that 1200.4 and that 1200.2 is only like this big. <laughs> uh, now, I, I, someone had mentioned a couple weeks ago on the show that uh, I believe um, somebody, one of the uh, Sundown or somebody like that was coming out with a big five channel amplifier that was going to have a thousand watts on the sub side. I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know how good that's going to be. But yes, the Stinger 8 gauge kit. Thank you, Mal. That's what you need. Digital Design has the monster. That's a hook. So maybe it was Digital Design. Yeah. So I knew somebody had one. I haven't looked at it though. But I think, I think also, <coughs> you know, I think Arc has one too. I think yeah. Arc Audio has a big amplifier with a thousand watts. If if I if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Of course. Um. Yeah, but it's still not rated for that. So I wouldn't. You know, just because just because uh, he put the amp to one ohm, it's not rated. No. It's, I mean, you got you got to do what it's rated. And for. they tell you right there. I mean, you you, you can blow anything up. 
Oh, yeah. Um, hold on. What scenario would you use the DM608 and a DM810? I want to buy one, but don't know which one. It just comes down to channels. It's 100% channels. Yeah. If you only need eight channels, you buy the 608. If you're planning on upgrading past eight channels, then you want the 10. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it, it doesn't matter whether it's the audio control or anything else. It's just a matter of how many channels do you need, how many channels are you going to want in the end, by the DSP that matches the amount of channels that you need. That's, yeah. that's all it is. Otherwise, it's all the same. Sundown has the 1800.5. See, I knew somebody. Uh, Jay, if yes. you call, I mean, just be patient, man. I'm sorry. Uh, Paul is really busy. Well, uh, I mean, sometimes you can't even get to. Yeah. We don't even get there. Yeah, I know. Uh, Focal, K2s. Active or biamp? Biamp is cool. Oh, passive? Well, uh, if you have a six, I mean, what are we doing? Are we doing? Um, trying to. Are we are we gonna go K twos with K twos active or passive? Three way or two way? There's K twos, man. K2s, I, I don't K2s. know. I mean, well, yeah, but if we're doing a so okay, so if uh, we're, all right, if we're doing a three way set of K twos, yeah, okay, and I have a DSP four channel amplifier, okay, or a six channel DSP amplifier, yeah, okay. The nice thing about the six, ch the, the three-way K2s is that it's bi-ampable for the mid-bass, mm -hmm. and then the mid-range and tweeter are on uh, their own crossover. Yeah. So what that allows me to do is just use four channels to power those. Look, at, Let's say I have a D6-1200. Okay, I could use one and two for the mid and tweet bi-amped into that, and then I could use three and four active, not going through the passive crossover, mm -hmm. for the mid-bass in the door. Yeah. So it just depends on what you're trying to do. If you have a DSP, you would just go active. I mean, it's not even a, it's not even really a question. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? Jeff Smith in the house install of the year 1990 something, right? Old wow. guys. Um, what do you recommend for a 2020 Honda Accord interior speakers for better sound? I would like to replace the head deck also, but I'm very limited. I have seen the Android radios for this car. Uh, why would you? Don't replace the head deck. Leave it alone. There's nothing wrong with it. It's 2020. It's perfectly. Yeah. Uh, maybe check out the video we just did on the 2020 Honda Accord or mm -hmm. the 2019 Honda Accord. Um, we got plenty of them. Uh, we went with Morels and that, but it's a, it's a six and a half and a tweeter. You go crazy. Six by nine components, active or passive? Uh, passive. I mean, just passive. there again. How much? How what much do, what do we got? Do we got six channel amps on everything? I mean, if we do, buy better speakers. Do you think I could fit a Pioneer floating screen in a 2017 Honda Accord? Eh, I'm pretty um, sure you can. Well, well, no, because the radio sits like this and the screen sits like that. So, it sits but like they this. don't they don't have a cable to go between the two. The radio is up and down. The brain of the radio sits vertical, yeah. and then the and then the screen is this. So you'd have to you'd have to find ribbon cables to go between the two to make it work. Um, so out of the box, no. With a lot of modification, yes. But you're also not going to have any way to retain any of the features built into the radio. So might not be worth it. Uh, okay. Uh, hey guys, will you put an amplifier in the lab and test it if you, I... Where are you reading this? Uh, brand, right there, where you have that. Uh, and give you a review. Well, the reviews that we do is for the manufacturers. Well, it might be a manufacturer. Okay. So here's the thing. We're very picky about what we test. I'm not yes. going to lie. We're, we're extremely picky. Um, if you want us to give us give an opinion on something, it can't suck because the world sucks enough. Um, and I'm not saying your product would. I, I, don't, I don't know. But sometimes we get asked to make instructional videos for things. Sometimes we get asked to do reviews. Instructional videos are simple. It's just better an unboxing and we talk about the product and how it works and we don't give you any inf like we don't give you our personal opinion on it. We don't recommend it. We just explain how the product works. And then we have the lab style videos where we go in and we have to review a product. Um, 
People often say, well, how come your views, everything's always great? Well, because if it sucks, we don't talk about it. That's really what it comes down to. Because um, we don't want to give anybody a bad review. Right. It's, it's not any fun. Um, so, you know, when D, when Big D does his amp dynos and he's like, oh, man, this amp failed. That's fine. That's fine. I, I just, we deal with, you know, he doesn't have to look these guys in the face every week and be like, hey, man, um, you know, huh, your stuff sucks. Uh, so, um we we'd be more than happy to take a look at something, and if it's it's if it's if a great product, then yeah, we'll we'll go forward with it. But you know, if it's if it's not, we'll we'll tell you why it's not, and we'll keep that out of the world. Uh, are you going to do or Thank have you, to Mel. Mel, Mel, any? Right. I ask uh, car place winners. I would like to. Um, so I'm not going to say no to that. Yeah. But if we actually, you know, we've done it. Yeah. We've done it. Uh, we did Brian's car. Mm -hmm. We did his Cadillac where we went through. And uh, If you go back to February of last year, we have Brian's car, Brian Mitchell of Arc Audio. We have his Cadillac that we did. Um, but no, that, that's, that was... <laughs> the year got away from us. 2020, something happened. I don't know. But yes, that's one of the things we plan on doing is going and doing stuff like that. It's just like right now, we're, we can't. So, but yes... Uh, is the audio control ACM 2.300 enough for the Hertz Centos? Yeah. Yeah. 300, yeah. Yeah. Maybe do Jeff's. Jeff's car. Um, Jeff would have to finish his car. But when Jeff Smith does finish his car, yes, we will be talking about Jeff Smith's car. Because he's got a bunch of Helix stuff, and we know how much everyone loves Helix stuff, so... What's the weirdest thing a customer has asked you to do in, the in their car. car? We've had some, this was years ago, we had someone want us to, to um, put bigger wire on their cigarette lighter. Bigger wire? Bigger wire to their cigarette lighter because like they kept... a four gauge wire? Uh, they needed a four gauge wire. It was a woman and she was having problems. She kept blowing the fuse. So she wanted it to go directly to the battery with an inline fuse on it. And What was the problem? Uh, the problem was is the vibrator she was using was drawing way too much current for the uh, cigarette lighter and shorting it out all the time. Apparently she was really, had back issues. You guys are perverts. Um, no. Okay. No, you guys were perverts. It was 100% that, so. <laughs> Jesus, um, guys. Yeah, no, it was totally that. Uh, but yeah, so, and of course we found out the hard way. Um, oh, hey. Bah, -tsh. Anyways. Uh, yeah, that ELR sounds amazing. I know, right, Elias? Jesus, it's, it's just ridiculous the amount of work that went into that. Um, I have a 1997 Jeep Wrangler. Would doing uh, time alignment with a DSP help my Jeep to sound extraordinarily <laughs> Where's better? Where's the video on that? <laughs> I know, right? That's I wasn't that exciting. From your experience with Wranglers, does it make a significant difference uh, uh, in sound quality? Uh, 1997 isn't really probably going to do anything for you, no. I would just EQ it. I don't really think a DSP is going to help a 97 Jeep no matter what you do. Uh, and the EQ that's in the radio is usually pretty good. Now, when we're looking at the newer Wranglers, yes, we do do time alignment. Um, but those have speakers up high in the dash, so it does give a, a little bit of, moves the sound stage up. We're not as worried about getting a center image in a Jeep Wrangler. Uh, we're just trying to get the sound stage up high in the dash uh, and more towards the center so that when the doors are off, it sounds more up here than it does over here and just kind of disappears. There's Tommy. Nice picture. Who? Tommy who? Yeah. Um, all right. At what level morale would you need to get to compare to the Audio Frog GV line? I honestly don't know. Um... GB line. Probably the hybrids. I would think the hybrids. They're about the same price point. Not the ones that you have the late? No, I, I, I well, okay. no, I think the elates cost more. It's either going to be the elates or the hybrids. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Oh, you mean massager. Oh, yeah, she's <laughs> massaging it, all right. Sorry, playing with the kids. And you should be playing with the kids because, well, kids are way more fun than we are. Totally. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Did you see the time? Wow. All right, Pioneer DJ controller, best way to incorporate it into my cars. I don't even know what a DJ Pioneer controller DJ is. Pioneer DJ controller? Okay, either way, your AVH uh, 606EX has an auxiliary input on the back. 
Uh, if your controller has a set of RCA outputs, get a aux to RCA adapter and that would be the best way to do it. You're gonna have to go into the menu system of the radio and turn your AV input on, but that would be the only way I could think to add any form you know, of sound or whatever into it and just use that as an aux source. And with that guys, that takes us to the time, the time, time. which it is. So we are going to call it a night, but before we do, remember, remember, Head over to Clean Wire Club and post your clean wire pictures, guys. We want to see all those clean wires. We want to see super sexy clean wire stuff. We don't want to see that. We want to see clean wire. This is nice. Um, also, yeah, also, but wait, there's more. Uh, DNF Tool Drawer is a place you can find all the cool tools that we use in our install. So if you're having trouble trying to figure out how we do something, here's where we keep all the tools that we use. And lastly, if you want to get a cool shirt with a five-star logo on it so you too can represent and look cool and everyone can be like, oh my God, you know those guys? You're like, yeah, they sent it to me personally. We didn't, but you feel that way. Or if you want to be like, I know Jeff Smith because, hey, doesn't everybody? Where's mm -hmm. my CDs, Jeff? Anyways, head over to teespring.com slash store slash five-star. Soon to be just spring. They're doing away with the T and just going to be calling it spring. So, But for right now, you can still go to teespring.com. And then lastly, yeah. we're on lastly. Patreon if you guys want to support us there. Some of you guys do. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. And with that, it's the end of the week. That's right. Finally, Chris Bennett shows up. Good night, uh, guys. You guys have a wonderful night. Let's go for another night. hour. Ha. Hell no. <laughs> I'm out of here. You guys have a good night. Be safe. Be fun. We'll see you back here Tomorrow. next Monday. We'll be back on this. Saturday, there is no show, guys. Yeah, yeah um, he's... Dean's taking a day taking off. Taking a day off. Seriously, man. And I man. don't want to do a show. Maybe. I doubt it. Because I'll be with Ada. So there's a chance. Um, but see you guys tomorrow. We'll see five you guys tomorrow. with Five Star. Yes. So right. have a wonderful night. Bye. Bye. Bye.